can see I'm working on the wagon today. For those of you who don't know, this is a 2003 WRX wagon. And uh, I'll just get right into it. What I'm going to be doing is replacing the valve cover gaskets. And there's one on each side. And it's pretty common with these engines that they start leaking. I'll we'll see if you can... I'm sure you can see. Um, the other side looks just like this and it's getting to the point where it's starting to... Anyway, it's getting to the point where it's starting to drip onto the exhaust. And um, you'll know that if it starts happening to you, you'll start seeing um, some of the burnt oil come up through here and, you know, come up come up through the hood scoop as well if, if you've got the uh, turbo model. They're not the easiest valve cover gaskets to replace, but it is doable. I haven't replaced them on this car yet, and this car has about 140,000 miles. Um, uh, the first step you want to do is remove the battery, and I kind of did that before I started just to kind of give you an idea of the condition that they're in right now. And both sides are identical, and they're, they're both leaking pretty bad. So I went ahead and uh, ordered all OEM, all new OEM, uh, valve cover gaskets and, and seals. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get started on that. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is make more room than just removing the battery. Um, I believe you can replace these without uh, jacking up one side of the engine. Um, you can do that. It gives you a little bit more room. But I believe that you can do this by just making a little bit of room in the engine bay, and you should be able to get to everything on the... Uh, on the side of the valve cover. I'm gonna start with the driver's side first. So the first step is gonna to be to remove this reservoir and to unbolt the fuse box so we can kind of push it out of the way and uh, I'll see how much room that gives us. But I'm gonna get started on that. All right, so removing the reservoir is pretty straightforward. You just have these two bolts up here and uh, the reservoir actually just sits. I don't know if you can see it, it actually just rests on top of a little plate down there. You'll have the two electrical connections that you'll have to take off. And uh, thankfully my reservoir isn't completely full, so I should be able to just remove these, remove the uh, the lines going to the reservoir and just kind of tilt it on its side uh, to keep it from leaking. All right, now that that's out of the way and it's giving me a little bit more room, um, I'm gonna unbolt this uh, fuse box and kind of move it out of the way as well. Oh, that's a lot better. Yeah, kind of a side note. Um, I have these LED bulbs that I got from Amazon on half the garage, and I bought another set to install before I started this, before I started this job to just get a little bit more light on the engine bay when I'm working. Um, never got around to it, but just kind of zip tied one to the hood since I don't have one of those LED work lights. Yeah, so this is perfect. This is a lot more light. It's gonna be a lot easier to see uh, what I'm doing. So anyway, uh, so I have the fuse box kind of moved to the side. It gives me a little bit more room to kind of get tools in there. Um, you can see the valve cover right there. So now I'm gonna see um, what I need to do as far as moving some of these wires and getting the oil fill tube kind of out of the way. And, and then I'll see how much how much room that gives me. I didn't think I'd need to, but um, I went ahead and just disconnected the wiring to the alternator. Once I start removing some of these valve cover bolts, it looks like I'm gonna need a little bit more room down here. So um, what I'm gonna work on next is removing this the oil filler neck and this uh, and this plate down here and remove this hose and just try to just try to get as much room as I can here before I start pulling off the valve cover bolts. So to get this oil filler neck off, you can see the hardware right there, just two, uh, I think they're like 10 or eight millimeter bolts. Um, there's also the uh, clamp that holds the wiring for the ignition coils. So you'll have to remove that and 
And there's also a bracket that I'm not sure if you'll be able to see or not, but there's a bracket that supports the oil filler neck. And I believe we'll be removing that as well to just give us a little bit more room. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this pulled off. All right, I have the uh, oil filler neck off. Uh, this one's pretty dirty. Uh, anyway, there's the, the two bolts that attach it to the uh, valve cover there. And then there's the one bolt here that uh, connects it to that uh, to that support bracket, which looks like I'll need to take off. And you can see it right here, it's just to the uh, left of where the oil filler neck mounts. So I'm gonna get that off, get that out of the way, and then get started on this uh, get started on this plate back here. All right, and here's what it looks like um, now that I've taken it off. Um, as you can see, it comes off pretty easily, just three 10 millimeter bolts. Um, I lost my, or I can't find my, my ratcheting 10 millimeter. So I just had to use um, just kind of a thinner walled 10 millimeter to get this bolt off on the left. Um, it's not too difficult to get off, but yeah, just the three bolts pop it off. And there is a gasket under here that I, I have a replacement for probably just swap it out this one looks this one looks okay but uh, since I have the gasket I will uh, just go ahead and replace that and while I'm thinking about that um, I'll make sure to put uh, links to everything that I've used in this video you can find aftermarket gaskets for for all of this but um, I just went ahead and uh, I just with certain gaskets I just stick with the uh, OEM stuff so I have the right and left uh, valve cover gasket and then the gaskets that go around the uh, spark plugs, two per side, um, those are also Subaru. Um, so I will, I'll leave links for everything in the description of this video. Um, I also went with Subaru on this one as well. It was cheap enough, I think it was like seven bucks or something. Um, this is probably one that you could go aftermarket if you wanted to save a few dollars. And uh, I believe they do make kind of a master pack that you can order that just, that has everything um, needed to do this job. But uh but this is what I uh, have for this project. All right, as you can see, the top plate is off. The oil filler tube is off. So um, once you get to this point, you're gonna wanna be really careful about knocking any loose debris into the, uh, into the valve cover. Um, so what I need to do next is I need to disconnect the wiring to the ignition coil and kind of move that out of the way and it looks like I can start removing the uh, the bolts to the valve cover itself. Just from here, it all, just from here, it appears that the majority of the leaking is coming right around the spark plug area. So it'll be interesting to take a look at it once I pull it off the engine. All right, I've got the wiring off. Just use this little tab right here; it just pulls right out pretty easily. So the next thing to do is to uh, remove the ignition coils. Okay, I've got these out. These come out fairly easily. It's just the one bolt, and uh, they're just kind of they're just kind of stuck in there. And uh, there is enough room to pull them out, even though you know there isn't a lot of clearance. You can pull them out and just kind of tilt them up, tilt them up and out of the way. Um, so it looks like I'm, uh, for the most part, it looks like I'm ready to start removing the hardware that holds on the valve cover. And there are three bolts on the top, three bolts on the bottom, and there are only two bolts in the middle. So um, I'm going to get started on removing those and um, see if I can pop this off. All right, so I've got the valve cover off. Um, I should have actually taken the time to move the wiring a little bit more before I pulled it off. It was kind of a tight fit to pull it through on the left side of the wiring. Um, but anyway, I was able to get it off without too much trouble. Um, kind of looked it over. I didn't see any obvious signs of where the leaking was coming from. Um, it does look like that it was probably coming from these, the inner gaskets here, you know, the outer gasket. Didn't appear to have any obvious 
you know, pinch marks or cracks or anything like that. Overall, it actually looks really good. The valve cover itself is really clean. So before I get the new gaskets on, uh, I'm going to take some time and, uh, you know, really clean up the valve cover on the inside and probably on the outside a little bit too and with brake clean or something like that. And so now I'm just going to get started on uh, getting this cleaned up. And one, one other thing I wanted to mention, my kit didn't come with these half moon gaskets here. So I'm gonna have to look these over and see, see how they look. I might pull them out and just reseal them up when I put the valve cover gasket back on. But yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I, for some reason, I thought that these would have come with those half moon gaskets, but, uh, but they didn't. So hopefully these are going to work out. Okay. I'll reseal them and, uh, hopefully that works out, but, um, I'll make sure to have a link to those in the description as well. That's kind of the finished product. As you can see, it's really clean. Um, it didn't take that much effort to uh, clean it up. I changed the oil on it on a regular basis, usually about every 3,000 miles. So there were, really wasn't that much buildup. Uh, kind of gave the uh, exterior of the valve cover a little, a little wipe down. I think this will be this will be good. I really wanted to make sure the inside was as clean as possible. So I'm going to give it a once over, just double check everything, and. Uh, let me get the uh, new gaskets installed. So the gaskets are done, they're installed. I decided to just put a little bit of this, uh, the Permatex, the gray gasket maker. Um, just kind of filled the channels a little bit. Um, if you cleaned it good enough, you probably could just get away with just putting the OEM seals on. But um, since these are a little more difficult to get to, I figured I'd put in an extra little layer. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I uh, get the valve cover back on. So I couldn't get the valve cover grommets in time so I just went ahead and looked these over and they appear to be okay so kind of clean them up with brake clean and whatnot and uh, so I'm just going to reuse them and you know clean up the hardware as well so yeah I'm just going to pop it back on. All right, so I've got the valve cover back on. It's definitely a lot more difficult to reinstall the valve cover gasket compared to taking it off. Um, what I should have done is tried to make a little bit more room with the wiring right here. Maybe I could have just unplugged a few things and just given me a little bit more clearance, but I was able to stick the valve cover down in through here and then kind of rotate it counterclockwise into place. And I was really careful to make sure to not touch anything as I placed it on there. And then, um, you know, I lightly, lightly tightened down the uh, bolts with my hand and uh, just went back afterwards and tightened it with uh, some hand tools. Um, there is a sequence that you have to tighten these. It starts out with the uh, middle bolts, the left and right, and then it goes to the middle bolts on the top and bottom. Um, actually, I 
this is the sequence right here. So you'll do the left and right on the middle, the top and bottom middle bolts, and then you'll crisscross pattern five, six, seven, eight, and then just kind of repeat. I'm gonna double check the torque specs, but it should be around five or four or five pounds, I believe. I'm just gonna have to hand tighten them since I don't have a torque wrench. And uh, yeah, so just keep that in mind when you uh, when you tighten this back down. Right on time, here's the uh, oil separator gasket. So this is going to replace this cover that was taken off the valve cover. You can see the old gasket here. It might have been okay to just clean the old gasket and reuse it, but um, these things are only a couple bucks as well. So I figured well, I might as well just uh, play it safe and uh, just replace it now to avoid any issues in the future. So. Um, I just need to clean up this part and prepare it to get it reinstalled back on the engine. Uh, as you can see there, I've got the, uh, the coil packs reinstalled, so I'm going to get work on that cover. Alright, I've got the uh, oil separator cover back on. You can see there the hose is reconnected and I've also connected the wiring to these spark plugs and um, the white plug goes on the left spark plug and the black plug goes to the uh, right spark plug. Okay basically now I'm just kind of routing all the wires back to where they need to go and um, this is also a really good time if you're like me to you know really get in here and kind of clean up the engine bay the best you can. Um, got this all cleaned up before I put the uh, reservoir back on. But yeah, just about got it all taken care of and uh, I'll have it done here in just a couple minutes. Let it idle for a couple minutes to get it up to operating, to get it up to the normal operating temperature. And I kind of use the flashlight to look down in there to see if there's any obvious signs of leaking. Um, everything looks okay right now. The uh, left side, the passenger side, is definitely starting to smoke a little bit. Um, but it was doing that before I pulled it in here anyway. But the right side, driver's side, looks pretty good. Um, I did throw a piece of cardboard under it overnight. I'm just going to leave that cardboard there until I'm done with the other side just to uh, make sure that there isn't any obvious leaks but uh, so far so good but yeah so next up I'm going to probably break it up into a separate video but I'm going to go ahead and get started on the passenger side so and yeah so I'll put all the uh, parts that I used in in the description of the video yeah it took a while but um, wasn't too difficult and uh, yeah, I'm just glad it's done